Truth is objective. Results are necessary, and what you print can be neither, so long as it's gripping. I've been a reporter for the Sturgeon Nexus for roughly 16 months. It's been a wild internship that started with a young, dashing, and sexually powerful Cajun shrimp seller walking into the wrong room on their delivery and being showered with confetti. Firm, but wet handshakes and elongated smiles like those you see in awful hyper-realistic depictions of cartoon characters. I remember the day they hired me, prepped with a welcome cake made of styrofoam and cream cheese, topped with Tide Pod decorations and a little sign affixed to the top, written in beautiful handwriting. The forbidden treat for the new hire. Don't mind the burning sensation. That means it's working. I barely had time to register the situation before a firm hand slapped down on my shoulder and my bones rattled with the force. Perhaps the recipient was vibrating? OF PROVINCE, YOU'RE FINALLY HIRED! <laughs> One jovial man exclaimed, his throat full of spiders when he spoke. Literally, a trapdoor spider sat itself by his uvula and clicked its feet as he got to the end of its sentence. We were so glad you've turned up. We were beginning to think you didn't want the job. A porcelain woman with a thick upper-class accent and thicker upper-class nostrils flared, her mouth not moving. I'll need to pour some hot coffee on your belly to celebrate. A third voice coming from the fifth panel down, four across the ceiling. The others bristled as it spoke. Don't, don't worry about that. Our resources manager has a difficult living situation. The first man said, patting me on the shoulder and leading me hurriedly out of the room. That was that. I met with my editor, a tough old son of a bitch called Econ, that spoke in riddles or short bursts of passion. Well, Kit, took you long enough. We needed some fresh blood around here. Ours is beginning to spoil. <laughs> he laughed, and his teeth laughed with him. I smiled awkwardly. Look, you're our new investigative journalist. Whatever's going on in this town, I want to know about it. Our readers are voracious, ravenous even, and the helping of maximum beef jerky we give with every copy isn't going to placate them forever. And we both know what happens when the readers get hungry. Of course I knew. Everyone in Sturgeon knew. The iridescent walkers descended on the office and a hostile takeover occurs. It's become a bit of a macabre tradition that the more liberal types want to stop, but it's hard to break old habits. I, uh, I have a job I gotta be getting back to. That Cajun shrimp won't- He slapped his hand down on the table, rings tipped with swirling amorphous masses undulating at his touch. His eyes burned with indignation, but his cheekbones said passion. I like you, kid. The Cajun and shrimpum is done. I have some really weird food you're gonna want to look into. I'll pay you triple. Besides... He moved some papers on his desk to reveal my resume, freshly made and with my relevant experience. All my relevant experience. You're looking for something and we're the right place to be. What do you say? We in business? I can crack open a pulse thumper. He smiled, and his teeth smiled too, shuddering with anticipation. I nodded. If he knew what he says he knew, then, well, this was indeed the place to be. What followed was an intense two weeks of training, clickbait maneuvering, assistant rearing to stop them from biting, and the Sturgeon Nexus code of conduct. Now don't worry, it's not lengthy or arbitrary, but it's worth mentioning. You never know how important these things are. If a story has threads, pull on them even if they resist. You never know what may be lurking at the end of your proverbial rope. Ask the hard questions, the soft questions, the medium rare questions, and the questions your soul burns you to ask but your high brain is sloppily pleading you to stop between gross dry heaving. Interviews are vital, and a source cannot be trusted if you can't speak to them. Dead, alive, incorporeal, or so filled with a deadening rage that they can't form consonants. It doesn't matter. Get. That. 
interview. Lastly, remember the Sturgeon Nexus motto, the journey and the destination to truth are forever intertwined, ad infinitum. So after a few puff pieces on people like the mayor and his recruitment drive, the garbage men that come in the night, and most recently, the iceberg theory incident, I got my big break and the reason I'm here with you all today. See, Chief says that audience interaction is vital to figuring out the intricacies that I can't see. Says that many, many eyes, mouths, flapping tongues, and strained ears are better than one pair of dulled senses by the fumes. Chief is a bit strange, but I see his point. I want to talk to you all about the Sturgeon Farmers Collective. The SFC rose to prominence here during the turn of the century, offering to sell people suffering from the famine a cut of their crops and the means to help them grow their own for next to nothing on the price. They'd turn up in their flowing robes, faces hidden behind scarecrow bags, and a great plow fastened to their backs. We will provide in your time of need. We will offer you sustenance to continue to the new season. You will repay in kind when the time comes. All good neighbors know of the kindness of the Sturgeon Farmers Collective. They would say with that Midwestern elderly charm breaking through their strange intonations, standing there at the threshold enhanced by the ugly light, holding out two bags, one with a rich and earthy red soil, covered in small pulsing seeds that shimmered when held under lamplight. The other bag was wet, squelchy, and smelled of cast iron. It twitched when the customers held it from the bottom, recoiling in on itself as the Sturgeon Farmers Collective made an audible click that subdued it. Do not mind the motions of food. All food at one time rides and flaps and cascades meet from its pores. Eat the food before you plant the soil. Do not reverse the process. We will return when it is time. They would tip their tall Denton hats, a thick, pungent slime oozing down the brim and staining the top of their hats, almost like tears. In the months that followed, the little settlement of Mantis Reach would begin to see changes. Those who ate the food were told to do so under cover of darkness, so as not to offend Lady Death. Being a superstitious town and servitude to our fair lady, they did not disobey. They described it as tough, turgid, and one woman was quoted as saying, I swear, in the moments that I bit down, it said something. Then, the insomniac movement came. By sheer coincidence, or otherwise, the townsfolk of Mantis Reach that ate the food as instructed would no longer sleep and instead dedicated themselves to the soil outside. People would be found with their faces firmly in the dirt, laughing as they inhaled earth and minerals, their chest heaving under the pressure and legs kicking frantically as they instinctively resisted. Eventually, the crops would grow their bulbous sacks of delight, and travelers would come to buy from the now largely unreachable inhabitants. But all would leave empty-handed. The Sturgeon Farmers Collective returned, and one settler who didn't partake reported their arrival in the waning hours of dawn, each of them fanning out from the center of the village to cover the major households. Their scarecrow sacks wafting in the breeze and showing gray flesh underneath. When they arrived at the houses, hands outstretched, the patriarch and matriarch of each domicile would greet them with fistfuls of the harvest, tears in their eyes. They would lead them to the backyard, where the great stalks now stood, an occupant of the family meshed within its grip in ways that were too awful to describe. So the harvest can begin anew, a cycle of virtue and of sacrifice. A cycle we, farmers, celebrate. With poise, precision, and animalistic hunger, they cut the stalks to the ground and brought each synthetic sack of horrors back to the town center, 
as the heads of the families trailed behind them, still weeping. There, they would stack the harvest, and the matriarchs would step forward, a sickle handed to each woman as she took her spot in line, trembling. The patriarchs then dropped to their knees, as those same writhing bags of food were placed in their hands, their sweating, decadent hands. Eat and be merry, your harvest reward. We are generous farmers. One would say, their voice a malaise in days gone by, betraying their sinister gait and undulating Denton hat. And so they did, eating with relish as heads disappeared in sacks to devour what lay inside. There was always a struggle, always a snapping and then a gnawing sound as the matriarch stepped forward to observe the process. If they did not continue to writhe, the sickle was brought down and they would fall silent. But if they did resist... The farmer's collective gained a new member. As the fanfare died down and each matriarch finished her job, all that was left was the harvest. The great bulbous sacks with the same oozing substance that came from the farmer's hats. Something moving inside them. The witness said it was a flash of hands, lip-smacking sounds, squeezes and pops before the farmers took their leave with the remaining harvest, vowing to come back when Mantis' reach was more prosperous. A bizarre event, to be sure. One that still gets taught at St. Martin's School to this day and is recalled by the Mantis Bay residents, especially after the events last summer that rocked the little town to its core. Not enough in the harvest for the last generation. That's how you get bad eggs and dark shadows. One resident, who wishes to be nameless and formless, would remark under the cover of Twilight. Problems started showing up in 92, right after the time of branches. Suddenly, no more offerings and no more growth. A lot of our boys started going missing. One of them farmers paid us a visit in the waning hours told us that the farmers had expanded and we would be observed, but not required. A lot of troubles came after that. They took a drag of their cigarette, bit down on whatever they were chewing on, and spat something viscous onto the floor. That there's the only thing we got left now. Our Mantis Bay special. Don't ever let them tell you what it is. We don't want to know. My job as a reporter is to find the interesting stories. And for every major event that's happened in Sturgeon in the past century, my paper focuses more on the incidents that get overlooked because of another calamity. Nightmare, dispute, or something involving mass terror. So when my source asks me if I want to catch me one of them farmers for an exclusive... My eyes light up and I feel my veins thicken. Ain't too difficult, but also ain't easy. Thing is, you gotta give them something worth coming to you for. Especially since we're not exactly in the boondocks. Sturgeon's been here for nigh on 900 years, settlements included, and we're pretty big. Old things like the Farmers Collective ain't got the time to chase after everyone, you know. They shifted, and their coat parted to show a burlap sack dripping wet that they unclasped and handed to me. Long fingernails with skin that looked as if it'd been wrapped in damaged parchment. I ain't gonna ask for much, but if you can find out how we can get them back to Manus Ranch while covering your story... You'd have my gratitude. I can try, but... But why would you want them back if what we know is true? Aren't you better off without them? I twirled my number 15 pencil and let the taste of lead hang on my tongue as they studied me for a moment. Long, dirty nails scratching at their skin and pulling away dead flesh. Kid, when man gets too bold, he needs to be reined in. You know why I never leave Sturgeon? 
why, despite everything that happens here and what they know, people won't leave. It ain't cause they're stupid, let me tell you. They leaned in, and I saw the yellow eyes, pupils dilating like that of a cat when it's preparing to pounce. They stay because there's significant benefit being near something more powerful than you. It's like nesting under the great wing of a beast that'll crush everything else. You'd rather be the one spared than the one devoured, and soon, even when all the lights and sturgeon go out, we'll have their protection to be thankful for. There was a long pause, and I shifted in my seat, black spots punctuating my sight. Too much lead? Still... Beyond all that, we're too used to the food. The Farmers Collective does something to it. We crave it. Sure, we can get it in smaller doses through their other businesses, but that raw garden, we need it. Good luck. With that, they slunk back into the shadows, and several hurried footsteps could be heard through the parking lot. Small shapes flitting underneath lamplights as they darted off. I called the chief up on my way back, a sign for Mantis reach overhead. Chief, what would you say if I wanted to interview a member of the Farmers Collective? I'd say do it on an empty stomach. Keep your wits about you, remember the Nexus code. He slurped something in the background, heavy gulps and a coughing fit as he licked his lips. Bad hotels are too expensive and cops can't be trusted with or without their many-eyed enforcers. That too, but no, remember. The journey and the destination of truth are forever intertwined. Ad infinitum, province. I found the old houses where the first settlement in Mantis Reach began. A quaint little village called Echo Coast. Not many lived here now. The recession and subsequent drive to work in the main city had caused most to flee. Their derelict log cabins and multi-connected yurts now all that remained of a once vibrant merchant town. Flyers for the Nightmare Fighting Tournament and the Dusklight Circus littered the ground, animals tearing at the remains as they spat words of vitriol to one another between the bites and scratches. It didn't take long for one of the long-time residents to approach me, thick-worn book under the arm and a pleasant but guarded greeting in their throat. Are you here to hear about our Lord and Savior, the Old Father? She chimed. Rehearsed words expelled from her lungs as if they didn't belong in her for a moment. Tired eyes sizing me up. I'm wondering if there's a spot I can borrow for a night to conduct a meeting with one of the, uh, farmers. I tried to hush my voice on the final part, but she merely bleated it back at me with the mere syllable passing my lips. The farmers? You do not summon the farmers. They come when they wish. Do you, you want to bring ruin and shame on this bustling town filled with vibrant souls looking to protect their kin and their livelihood? She pulls the book closer to her chest, and I can see red marks around her knuckles. The Allfather says they'll come back, and, and they'll bring prosperity with them as we feast eternally on ourselves. But they will bear us. Yes, no more hunger. I tried to get more from her, Boris. but she simply pointed to a vacant yard and kept muttering, or Boris, to herself as she paced back to her home. In the window, I spotted an old man with milky white eyes staring out of the window, jaw slack and the muscles long since depleted. He was a vessel to observe, nothing more. But I felt a chill run down my spine when I realized that somehow, some way, he was looking right at me. As I rounded the corner and found the backyard in utter disarray, I knew I'd found the right spot. Weeds sprouted up out of the thick black soil, huge white stalks pumping as they swayed in the breeze. Insects of all manner proliferating around its base as they fed and killed and morphed. Setting down the bag and waiting for the cover of darkness, I let my mind wander to what these people had been intimating. So much superstition, but nothing in this city was ever straightforward or normal. So why would now be any different? Maybe there's some truth to it. 
something to investigate when the story is over. The night passed overhead, and I dug a small hole in the ground, unfurled the bag, and with some effort and resistance, poured it into the hole without looking. A small splash of meat hung on my finger, but the remainder dropped in as I hastily covered the hole with the black soil and waited. I knew it would draw them out, but I admit I was curious about the taste of the strange meat. A small piece of it clung to my finger, soft and warm. An alluring scent I could not place filled my nose as I bit down and tasted without thinking. I can see why the townsfolk want the farmers back if it means producing more delights like this. It's uncanny in flavor and texture. It's moorish and yet not. I think the only thing stopping me from digging up the contents and feasting was the sound of clothes being flapped in the breeze as a farmer rounded the corner and greeted me. You've been busy. Its voice was not at all the way I expected. Sweet and salty instead of bristling and gravelly. It sounded the way peanut butter feels when being swallowed by the spoonful. I get around. It's part of my job. I didn't want to appear meek. These things could smell fear. I also thought if I didn't move that maybe they wouldn't see me. But that seems to only work for very large badgers and moon dwellers. They didn't like my cavalier response and leaned down, gripping their burlap sack with thick gloves. You're curious, but the farmer's collective does not need curious. We need compliance. You are not eating well. Their nails split through their gloves to pull at the folds of their masks. You are looking through dead soil for answers that are long lost. The farmer's collective has expanded. We had to ensuring we could cultivate for a far larger stock of workers. They pulled off their hood, and for the first time in a long time, I felt unmitigated terror flood my veins. My heart leapt and stuttered as my brain tried to comprehend the visual feast in front of me. It was wrong, it felt wrong to look at, but every time I tried to tear my eyes away, I salivated all the more. My body trembled while my stomach cried out for sustenance. I felt something cold and coarse trickle down my throat as whatever resembled a mouth called out through the fog, filling my ears and eyes. You have not been eating. You will need your strength for the answers. You are not unique soil, but you will bear special crops. We will harvest them when the time comes. The farmers always reap for those who sow. We are your friends, providers, and we will protect our investments. My memory is hazy from this juncture, but my notes detail the farmers putting their masks back on, promising me something. And then I fixated on the raccoons around the area that were making their presence known. I wrote about the harvest repeatedly before my last words scratched so hard into my notepad that it broke my special pencil. Corporate. I woke face down with a mouthful of lactic acid and my teeth stained and shivering. Every muscle felt strained and I was on my own as the sun began to transfer to the dusk shift. That woman from earlier stood outside her porch, book bound and tied to her chest and a flyer of the dusklight circus gripped with shaking hands as she stared at me mouth agape. If a snake eats its own tail eventually, and he shall choke on it upon realizing he is too far gone to regurgitate. She called. A shaking finger pointed out towards me, frayed hair flowing in the wind. You will know this. You will know this! I tried to talk, but my throat resisted at the mere attempt. I felt a lingering sense of being stalked as I stumbled back through this dead village to my car. Maybe it was the... raccoons. On the drive back, I fought the maddening urge to pull over and eat silica gel packets with warm milk, bite down on a piece of drywall, or chew the succulent juices from a laundry detergent pod. When trying to eat anything normal, I felt the bile rise in my stomach and treated it as if I were eating grass by the handful. 
angry at me for attempting to deviate from the cravings. It was only after I gave in my report to the chief and had something of a welcoming cake that I began to feel normal. The zesty lemon and raspberry of the cake Tide Pods making my stomach growl with glee. I'm glad I didn't do further digging until after my digestion, though. See, before I got assigned my next lead, I decided to look into the Sturgeon Farmer's collective history. My new staff would tell me very little, aside from, it's how it's always been, can't do much now, and nobody wants to eat raw, right? All of them said no matter what hot scoop the resources manager in the ceiling had, it wasn't worth hearing them out. So, off to the archives I went, hoping to find some extra info on their history. And I sure did find it. June 8th, 1905. Sturgeon Farmers Collective forms recruitment drive. The desire to create more jobs and begin a corporate change for a new era is behind the move, says a spokesman for the farmers. September 13th, 1938. Factory worker revolt leads to several accidents. Former workers claim there's something in the food. Sturgeon Farmers Collective refuses comment. September 15, 1938. Mass fire breaks out in Sturgeon docks. Multiple buildings destroyed and many feared dead. Witnesses claim they heard screams separate and more dissonant than that of the workers. April 30th. 1976. Multiple deaths seemingly linked despite no clear motive after several Sturgeon residents convulse after trying a newly branded cereal by Sturgeon Farmers Collective. Medical results are sealed and the cereal has been pulled. The only comment offered by the Sturgeon Farmers was simply, it wasn't ready. August 23rd, 1992. Sturgeon Farmers Collective now oversees and operates a staggering 88% of all the food cultivation and production in Sturgeon, employing a third of the city's eligible workforce. They have diversified from a crop-growing gathering union into a fully realized industry that sells everything from meats to rice and candy. Echoco ceases its agreement with the Sturgeon Farmers Collective cites problems with production and an inability to keep up demands, all healthy male workers are invited to a personal recruitment drive at the SFC headquarters. May 7th, 2001. Lethargy, insomnia, and desire to go hiking to high spots, seeing massive spikes in the current generation. Doctors report no findings of anything unusual on admittance to hospital for the above symptoms, but over three dozen young men suffering upon being discharged have gone missing in the last decade, and we're no closer to understanding why. June 8th, 2016. It's allergy season, and if you're a cooking fan, mushrooms are in prime condition to collect. Be wary of pollen and fungus spores when you go hunting, though. You wouldn't want to catch anything. Sturgeon Farmers Collective now offers a cure-all allergy medicine you can take with your breakfast. Go to your local grocery to find out more. Corporate. They were finding ways to diversify their food stock and ensure there would be enough for a growing population. They were making sure we would be well-fed, no matter the cost. I retch and feel the contents of my stomach spill out over the archives. Gray, bubbling, and piping hot as it burns my lips and cakes the floor. Something big lodges in my throat and it takes everything I have to force it out, eventually prying a piece of it with my fingers from behind my tongue and pulling no matter how much my eyes watered and my ears screeched in protest. My legs go weak and I fear I won't be successful before I pass out but one final wrench sets it free and it splashes into the putrid mix beneath me as I sit back down and groan. When I look at what had made a home in my stomach, I hastily grab a napkin and scoop it up, dizzily excusing myself and apologizing for the mess. They cannot see what this was. I don't know if they know, but the chance can't be taken. I think it best that I start following up on other leads now. 
The farmers have made it clear that it would be unwise to do so. Maybe I'll have more to come back to you with soon, but this particular thread should no longer be tugged on. Not after what I've seen. I stare at it on my desk, heart pulsing in my chest and tongue flapping around in my mouth like a fish as it struggles to relax, anxious that something still lurks in my throat. I feel sick, I feel hungry, I feel fear. You have to understand, I had to burn it. If they know, I don't have this anymore. A small humanoid shape was within the mixture. Brown hair, green eyes, a small scar on their upper lip that looked too similar to my own to be coincidence. I don't trust the Sturgeon Farmers Collective. Especially now they've gone corporate. Ad infinitum.